So here we are, Wave Pool, with a show called On Camp Corner. And On Camp Corner, the title is taken from the uh, song by uh, Bill Rogers in the 19, late in the 1930s. It's kind of a calypso, but being from down, it's not quite a calypso. It's called West Indian Weed Woman. I painted it, I painted it very faintly on the wall um, with the intention of annotating all of the patois terms that he uses to describe the herbs and um, cures, spices, medicinal plants that this uh, weed woman, uh, seller, itinerant seller, is, um, is shouting out as she goes down the road. Um, so the show uh, relates to that song uh, because it includes images of uh, dried plants that I came across in the National Museum in Kingston, and there are two watercolors of those displays. Um, but I didn't take the photographs very well uh, because I wasn't allowed to photograph in the space. So I did it clandestinely and they were a little out of focus and, and poorly framed. Um, but I really wanted, with all this work, to indicate that uh, um, the various ways in which the images are mediated as a Westerner visiting Jamaica. Uh, although I have some Caribbean ancestry, it's not on the side of these cultures of them these aspects of culture that I'm representing. So there are the dried plant paintings, uh, everything's watercolour by the way here, um, whether on watercolour paper or on UPO, the non-absorbent paper. And those UPO pieces are from uh, Akampon, and they are, uh, again, images, watercolours of photographs that I took when I visited the uh, uh, centre of the museum they have in Akampon. Akampon is a marine village in the western hills of Jamaica. So the Maroons, uh, the term Maroon referred to uh, uh, escaped, uh, enslaved people who successfully fled into the mountains and resisted, uh, at this time, the British, who had just um, uh, um, uh, pushed the force the Spaniards off the island. Uh, and the uh, Maroons had taken the opportunity to flee into the mountains. The British, of course, wanted to re-enslave them, so they fought them uh, long and hard, but the Akampong Maroons uh, used camouflage as one of the strategies for uh, outwitting the British. And every year they, they celebrate, they commemorate this resistance by, um, in a ceremony where they, once again, wear uh, branches or trees of the local foliage. So there are four of those images, and again, they, they're from that community center that had a very odd way of displaying work, I really, like the particular idiosyncrasies of their display, where they would simply pin photographs on top of old photographs and, um, and also decorate the, uh, the, 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 the display um, in, in ways that would be to us quite casual by painting around, uh, um, around images, around um, printouts, uh, and sometimes splashing paint onto the prints themselves. And in this case, these are uh, explanations, the botanical explanations of um, uh, aloe or aloe uh, here on the left. And uh, they've gone to the extent of putting dried plants, hanging dried plants over the text. Um, and there's also uh, stories here of the maroons themselves, the character they have and the, and the uh, manner in which they resisted the British and held on to their independence. So, uh, in addition to watercolors, there are two sculptures of uh, plants that, um, trees in this case, uh, banana plantain and the ackee, uh, both uh, really important for Jamaican cuisine. But these are amongst, uh, well, over 30 plants that form the African plant diaspora, plants that were uh, taken uh, by slavers on the ships accompanying the people they had enslaved as provisions for the trip and for the crew, of course. But they also had provender for animals, and all those plants were successfully cultivated in the Americas um, by enslaved people who were not typically given food and but had to cultivate it themselves, as well as, of course, working on the plantations. So two trees here, the Aki, uh, typically um, a quite tall tree that used uh, in 
a, a, a Jamaican national dish called a, a saltfish and ackee, and you can't eat it until it's fully ripe or it would be poisonous. And you know it's ripe because an orange uh, center starts to protrude from the, the fruit, and, uh, and you can knock it off the tree and, and cook it. Um, plantain banana, I can't tell the difference between them, but apparently it's something to do with the bark, the way the bark peels from the, the trunk. Um, and, uh, and these are made of cardboard boxes on concrete blocks. So a couple of other aspects here. The, the frames are all made of fallen branches from the uh, garden where I live. Um, so they're salvaged uh, by me and, that, and, and routed and assembled uh, to make these frames. And I thought that that would be appropriate for the content of the show. The image, the, the, one of the odd images, that one, one ones out is the uh, laptop computer with the book behind it. And this is a, um, uh, a, a photograph that I took in an Ital kitchen in Kingston, downtown Kingston, uh, a, a, a restaurant that was literally a hole in the wall, uh, open air behind it, run by uh, Rastafari and uh, cooking only the most natural, pure ingredients. And I had a wonderful breadfruit sandwich. But I was really impressed by the display over one of the preparation tables with multiple images of Haile Selassie, several of Bob Marley as well, including plants and herbs that were hung in plastic bags on top of the images. And by showing it on a laptop, I wanted to remind myself of how so much of the images we consume are processed on laptops. And, um, and as a, um, as a consumer of those images myself, as a white person visiting Jamaica, I wanted to make it clear that um, there was a lot of mediation of these images taking place. The book behind is called New Keywords, and uh, it's an updated version of Raymond Williams' book, Keywords. It was very important to me growing up. Raymond Williams, the uh, Welsh uh, cultural theorist. And when I uh, looked up the term diaspora in uh, New Keywords, uh, it led me to these four watercolors over here, which um, really again show me in the act of reading that that that, um, that, that entry for diaspora, and, and it was um, really striking for me that the first, very first sentence reads, "Diaspora literally meaning the scattering of the seeds," um, and, and so I thought again uh, how appropriate. So. We, the scattering of African peoples as they were forced into slavery um, as accompanied by the scattering of the plants from Africa, the scattering of the seeds. Um, so there uh, are a couple of other watercolors back here that um, are from Akampong. So the display, uh, two more images of the um, ceremony uh, uh, involving camouflage. But also the photographs I took, the, uh, were, I took them a bit carelessly and were out of focus. And I wanted to um, retain that quality of being imperfectly photographed. Um, so they're a little hard to read. Uh, and then one of the other images here is of the, um, another of those displays, wonderful displays of yellowing or browning paper, old, old printouts that are put on the wall and painted around. And, and, uh, just allowed to deteriorate, the images allowed to fade on the museum display in you know, qualities which I really uh, enjoyed um, seeing and reproducing. And then the last thing, perhaps we should, shouldn't forget the plants that we have thrown in here, which are uh, uh, plants that were uh, uh, included in the African plant diaspora. So we've got taro. On the left here, root vegetable, coffee, and uh, banana. And uh, we hope that we're going to be able to keep these alive and more uh, during the <laughs> exhibition and beyond. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Thank you, Carl.